Persian language uses the same text as Arabic language. It's written from right to left. It is incredibly musical, OK? Um, now, I, I normally, generally, I, I, I'm a, because I'm a poet who writes in English, I translate from Persian to English because I'm not a poet who writes in Persian. Okay? But in this case, uh, when the University of Iowa approached me with this incredible project, they said, we are translating Whitman's Song of Myself into 11 languages, and we want to translate it into Persian. Interested? And boy, I was excited. It was, it's a really great project. So I uh, said yes. And I asked a wonderful Iranian poet, Mohsen Ahmadi, who writes in Persian, to co-translate it with me. Therefore, we had two Persian translators who understood the language very well, the culture very well, but one who wrote in English, and then the other one who wrote in Persian. Perfect match. And we liked each other, so we thought, great, we'll work together. We had to deliver one section a week, 52 sections, 52 weeks. We've been doing it for a year now. And um, we are in, in section 49. We're at the end. I'm going to go out after section two, and I'm going to get drunk. <laughs> um, it has been, we knew it was going to be difficult, but I had no clue it was going to be this difficult. And I tell you why. Whitman's Song of Myself. How many of you have read Whitman's Song of Myself? OK. You all know it's, it's a difficult piece. Like, you know, you can read it. But my goodness, there are people who have written books about it. Analysis after analysis. Sometimes you can analyze a single section for, for pages and pages. They gave me access to two scholars, Ed Folsom and Christopher Merrill, who heads the program. Now, I'm going to give you examples so you understand what we're dealing with, like sometimes even the simplest things. And this gives you an idea why language is in that third universe between the outer world and the inner consciousness. Why? It's so rooted in culture. OK, let's translate song of myself. Easy, right? Song of myself. How hard can that be? You pick up a dictionary, you can do it, right? No, 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 no. OK, let's, let's examine it. Myself, OK? When Whitman named this piece. It's very important, Song of Myself. That's the most important part of the poem right now, because that's the title. It, it's, it's, it's about the whole poem is a song of myself. So myself is two repetitions. My self. I'm, I celebrate myself. So in Persian, if we were going to be uh, just very nonchalant about it, we would uh, translate it as khodam. Khodam. Why not? Khodam. That's the right translation. But I sat there thinking about it, and I thought, no. Khodam has self only once in the word. I want it twice. So we started searching. Uh, there were various, various um, options. And finally, we decided we're going to say khish tan. Khish Ten, twice, myself, OK? Then it comes to the song. Song, really, if you want to translate it properly, it would be surud in Persian, OK? But surud has been politicized in Iran. If you want to say the national anthem, or if you want to sing something for the mullahs and ayatollahs, it's a surud. I can't use that. So, um, so 
so that 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 created a, a whole lot of problems. It was like a national anthem. It was like a political song. So we decided to use our voz. So it became our voz of Ishtan. Okay. Do you know how long we spent? I mean, it sounds simple. And when a person reads the translation, oh, Avaz Khishtan, of course. But they don't understand how much thought went into that single thing. OK. We go to section five. You have that. Loaf with me on the grass. Loose the stop from your throat. Not words, not music or rhyme I want, not custom or lecture, not even the best. Only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. OK, that section is hard enough to translate. But there are several, there were three words that took us probably, I would say we spent two days, two days on these three sections. OK. Loose the stop from your throat. We don't have that word in Persian. We can't say it. There is no such thing. We don't, it's like the way Whitman says it. We have to recreate. We have to say something new. We cannot say, loose the stop from your throat. Because the stop, what he's saying, like open it up so you can you know, speak. Um, so we decided finally, after long discussions, to use sad, which is a dam. So we decided to put a dam in his throat, so loosen the dam. And it's sort of kind of a nice image, right? And it works beautifully in Persian. Bishkan sadde galu yatro. And then the question of lol. Now, Whitman chose that word for a reason. Lol sounds like lullaby. Lol, lol. But in Persian, it was hard to come up with a word that didn't sound harsh. So he picked that word for a purpose. He wanted that sound of lullaby. So finally, we decided to use the word lullaby. See, we took a little bit of a few, um, uh, we, 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 we took some liberties. But not too much, enough, enough not to betray Whitman. Because, ladies and gentlemen, a translator has the right to make things even better than the original. The original exists only in source language. When you're recreating in another language, you have to be as good. But if you want to be better, you can be better. So, um, we, so we try to be as good, or maybe sometimes a little better. And then he goes with uh, valved. So uh, let's see, the Persian word. So that was interesting. Valved voice, um, we, uh, what is a valve? You all know? Right? We don't have that in Persian. We, we tried all these different words. So finally, we chose chahe, which is of, a, of the throat of a bird. That's like a valve. You go chuk, 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 chuk. So we use that. And OK, it turned out pretty good. Um, then we went to, OK, then we, uh, section seven. Has anyone supposed it? Lucky to be born, lucky. How easy can that be? Now, a less fussy translator would just say, yeah, khoshans. Khoshans is lucky. And it doesn't sound bad. It's a beautiful word. But hello, chance comes from French. So if we were going to translate it in the spirit of Whitman at the time that he wrote it, Shans did not exist in Persian. So we are thinking, ah, oh, so then the other word would be bakhtiyari. Had a little problem with that, because bakhtiyari is the actually also connected to the last name of a whole tribe of people in Iran. But we decided it's better than khoshans. So, so we agreed on bakhtiyari. Section 7. Undrape. 
You are not guilty to me, nor stale, nor discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham, whether or no, and I'm around, tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and cannot be shaken away. There's no such word as Andre, really, no, nothing so polite except Oriancho, so we use that. Then, I, and I'm around. Now that's the other, like, you know, I'm, I'm consulting Ed on all of these things. What does that mean, and I'm around, tenacious? Because it's, he's not saying I'm around, like you guys say to each other, oh, I'm going to be around here for a while. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about around, um, like this, like this, I'm around, embracing. So how do we, how do we say that in Persian? How do we, uh, without explanation, and then also shaken away? That is, that is, uh, uh, that was very, very different. So uh, we we came up with a solution, girdo, girdetuam. That means I surround you. So we sort of like worked with that. And uh, shaken away, we came up with the right way of saying it in Persian. But all I'm saying these that to show you, it's not that, you know, you can't just take a dictionary and say, oh, this is what it means, and I'm going to transfer it. You have to make sure that in Persian is as beautiful, it is poem, and, and it enriches the language. So we're trying to take Whitman and enrich Persian language with new images, new thoughts, new elasticity of language. This last section uh, is very interesting that I have on here. So he says, the blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, talk of promenaders. Very interesting. Slough of boot soles. Do you know slough? He created that word. Whitman made up that word. And I was, you know, so I, I'm writing to Chris and Ed. And um, I just want to read you what, what they were, what Ed said. He says, I have, I've always heard Whitman's slough of boot soles as his invention of sound boots make as they slug through mud. Slough, with F, is a phonetic spelling of slough, with G-H, which as a noun is a muddy bog, not unlike Manhattan sidewalks and streets in the mid-19th century. As a verb, slough is to shed or cast off. So all those boots walking the muddy streets are continually taking on mud and shedding it off, all the while making a distinctive sound that echoes both the noun and the verb Slough of boot soles. Good luck. How am I going to take an entire paragraph of what something means and put it into Persian? I went crazy, like I lost two nights sleep. OK, we translators, listen. What's a weekend for translators? Two days of work before Monday. So. I, I was just like sitting there, and it's very, very nerdy. I know it's nerdy to sit there, like, you know, worry about slough of boot soles that Whitman wrote. But uh, I searched and searched. I talked to every Persian I knew, like, what would you say? To and I came up with, uh, with, a, with a sound, uh, kilish. Kilish. Kilish is a sound of something that sort of like uh, drags, drags. And I decided, OK, I'm going to repeat the word. I'm going to say kilish, kilish. So then I made it up, and it became kilish, kilish Putin ha. That means kilish, kilish of shoes. And then Ed, Ed wrote me back. And he said that now, before he, he said, Ed wrote back, he said, slough, slough, slough. I hear it every time I witness someone walking through mud. And now I hear kelesh, 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 kelesh. So uh, if I weren't, like, kelesh was a sound that I remembered when I was a child. We must have used it at some point between us children. And you use 
that that connection that you have to to your culture and you pull pearls like that up that's why if imagine that if i did not really speak persian very well and i had i had no concept of what the culture is about or how things exist or its root would i be able to come up with these no it would be very difficult Okay, so that was Whitman, and of course, I have so many stories to tell you. We don't have time. Uh, the last one that was kind of a little funny, uh, he had said, uh, 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 Whitman said, uh, uh, dear son, sit by me for a while. I, I don't remember the exact, but sit by me for a while. And we had translated it, uh, sit by me for a while, have a glass of milk, have some cookies. And then <laughs> we had translated it, lachti in jo benishin. That means a while, lachti, lachti. But if you take a out, you can read the same word as lochti, which means naked. So basically he was saying, my son sit by me naked, <laughs> have a glass of milk. And with Whitman, that, that wasn't going over very well, so I caught that, and I, uh, so we were having a good laugh with my co-translator, who, by the way, is in, uh, lives in uh, Mexico City, so we are constantly on Skype, video Skype together.